Hi, today we've got another quickie video update for you on my iPhone 5 to bring you the latest information as fast as possible here from our workshop in Sydney. And what we're going to talk about today is the difference between the 08 to 13 model WRX engine compared to the SDI uh, engine of a similar year model series. And one of the biggest differences is the plastic manifold compared to the aluminium cast alloy inlet manifold which we've got on the dyno to show you in a minute and you'll see this particular engine is a complete built engine um, which has just been freshened up for the customer it's done about 50,000 kilometers probably 40,000 kilometers of that were done at the track and um, some of the things is like forged pistons heavy duty rods uh, big valve big port head and some of the external things you can see is here alloy uh, crankshaft pulley which will then fit with the GFB pulley kit but most notably around the side and the back here, you'll see we've got the silicon intake pipe that goes under the inlet manifold and around here into the Tomei Turbo. And one of the things I really want to point out is the difference between the way the Tomei Turbo fits on the WRX because remembering the throttle body on a WRX on this current series is down and tucked up under here with the, ele with the electronic throttle control and a replacement silicon pipe that fits the intercooler system. And just take a note of that, and I'll show you in a minute the STI version of that. But whilst we're here under the car, you can see we're about to put the engine back in place. Being a track car as well as a road car, it's got a lot of white line suspension upgrades. The st chassis stiffener here, roll centre kit, stiffer sway bar, big brakes. And you'll see over this side here, which is not connected at the moment, is the engine oil cooler kit which sits in front of the radiator because remember this car doesn't have a front mount it generates incredible throttle response with a big good quality MRT top mount intercooler so if we're on the track it's in the corners really quick on and off throttle to generate maximum boost as quickly as possible so we'll just turn around here you'll notice just down here it's got extractors with a lot of heat shielding to protect the radiator and the bottom of the engine and this is the connection for the sandwich plate that goes to the oil cooler for the engine and you'll notice the difference between this compared to the original factory manifold. Now I want to point out a lot of people unfortunately fit extractors onto these engines at the wrong time. There is no gain in fitting a set of extractors like this to an engine unless you've built the engine internally because the maximum performance of the engine is governed by the internal reliability of the original factory pistons and rods. That's the weakness up to a certain level until you do a rebuild. So I would only encourage you to fit extractors on your turbo Subaru or petrol turbo Subaru when you've done an engine rebuild. So follow me around into the dyno and we'll show you the recently dyno tested STI. Now this is a uh, MY08, MY09 four-door SDI sedan and you'll notice straight away it's got a aluminium cast alloy inlet manifold, an MRT top man intercooler, GFB blower valve, but most notably you'll see we're using a Tomei silicon intake pipe to another Tomei turbo as well, but you'll notice here this is where the aluminium inlet manifold has the throttle body. Remember on the plastic inlet manifold on the WRX it's tucked down in underneath here because of the different orientation of the way the intercooler works. And the important point that I wanted to make here is when you're going for really big turbo upgrades on these engines after you've done a good engine rebuild, a lot of the old school early model big turbos no longer fit because of the position of the electronic throttle control on these newer model engines. So in actual fact, this model, we actually tested some new turbos to see if they physically would fit, and mechanically they won't. Performance-wise, they would be pretty good, but this turbo is the best of both worlds, which will bolt straight on without having to do an angle mount change. Still fits with the silicon intake pipe, but the offset of the, of the silicon going in underneath the inlet manifold with these bigger turbos starts becoming a bit of a challenge when you're doing work on these later model cars. And you may ask why has it got a modified air intake? Well, this particular engine is probably worth about twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. And when you're pushing big horsepower through these engines, yes, you do start running out of flow capacity with the factory standard air box, and you start having to run more modified air intakes on a car again that doesn't have a modified internal engine parts. It's only at the upper level of pushing big horsepower with standard internals on the SDIs that you start thinking about needing a modified air intake, whereas most situations, the factory standard air box is more than adequate. 
other little things, the original uh, radiator is more than adequate. Um, and obviously you can see down the bottom here, GFB alloy pulley kit, which is now fitted with all the other parts. You may ask, what is this? Well, this is connected to an air blower, which pumps air constantly into the top mount intercooler when we're running the car on the dyno because of course with a Subaru you've always got plenty of airflow through the radiator but it's always a challenge depending on whose dyno you're using to get reliable inlet air through the top mount intercoolers of these cars to be able to do consistent inlet um, temperatures when you're running the car under load and when we're doing it on our dyno this is one of the things that gives us really good stable inlet temperatures under heavy load because we've got a stable amount of air always pumping air into it. It's like a ginormous windsock when this fan turns up. So there you have it. The differences between inlet manifolds and turbos and what to look for on your WRX and the STI. We're talking here MY08 type models onwards. Um, at the moment we're MY13, the MY14 is coming with a new engine so it's probably the end of this series pretty soon. And I hope that information has helped you no matter where you are in the world. For today, I'm Brett Middleton. Make a comment here on our video channel. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Look forward to your feedback. And of course, if you need some help, pick up the phone, send us an email. We're here to guide you as much as we can, no matter where you are. But for today, thanks for watching.